week we do on Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break. Hey, it's kind of coming up on the holidays, but still we need to talk about Linux, open source, floss, and all that fun <laughs> stuff. Maybe even penguins. I'm Vince Stone. That is Jill Bryan. And he's Yay. back two weeks in a row, but don't worry. He's going to break that record next oh, yes. week, probably. That is one page from Mateus. <laughs> How's everyone doing? It's another exciting week. A lot oh. happened since last Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, well, Pedro has been moving, so that's a major <laughs> life change. <laughs> you know, Pedro, I finally have a living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pedro can be animated, man. You know, sometimes like he moves around. Uh, what will we do on a Saturday show? I mean, sometimes both of them are like, is Jordan froze? And Jordan's like, what? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is strange. Oh, boy. What's been going on, Julia? <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot going on. Um, we had another Linux Gamecast party Saturday, and it, and it was uh, Striders, creator of Lutris's 40th birthday as well. So, yay. <laughs> and I had my last day of animation class Monday for the end of the semester and winter break. And I got some really good Blender animations from my students, which are really cool. And I also... And t attended community hack night at Riot Games once again Monday night, and I'm still doing more planning for scale. So it's it's this week has been hectic. I, I haven't stopped moving actually. <laughs> Pedro, I and, know you've and been moving, Pedro man. has been moving. <laughs> yes, I have been moving. I finally have something that resembles a living room and not just a bunch of piled up cardboard boxes. Um, which I won't get to enjoy because next Sunday I'm on a plane uh, to Portugal to go visit my parents over Christmas. So uh, you're going to be here <laughs> without me for two weeks. I know no one will mm. miss me, but I'll be back. No. Don't Aww. you worry. <laughs> no, I'm going to miss my friend Pedro. Talk about tempting Aww. fate. Uh, <laughs> as you heard it here, guaranteed you will be back in two weeks. Hey kids, I ordered finally after procrastinating and finally talk. I don't like spending money. It takes me a minute. If you haven't noticed, um, I bought that Amazon tablet, the 10 inch seventh series, seventh gen from, mm -hmm. um, uh, Amazon of all places, which is kind of a bastardized version of Android, but it's $99. I don't know if it's $99 today. And I, I look forward to doing my best mm. not to root it and turn it into <laughs> some amalgam of what it doesn't need to be because it's just going to live life as a video switcher. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But, it plays Chrome. <laughs> that's all it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do I do? <laughs> well, yeah step one, sideload played store. And, and I think she's like, I ordered one and it works just fine for 99 bucks. It's 1080p screen at 10 inches to press. That's good. But Hey, yeah. speaking of hacks, Let's get right into it with some uh, DNS. Mm. Oh, yes. So uh, <laughs> you may have heard that Linux.org over the past week got hacked. Heck, yeah. maybe you were even the... And, uh, and if one you of were the... really, really unfortunate, you saw... <laughs> Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, there is a link to the, um, yes, they say it's a very not safe for work image, but there is don't a link to the web it. archive. Don't, just don't. Um, unless you're really into, no, let's not go there. Uh, but yeah, no, Linux.org got hacked. The front page was defaced. And how did they get hacked? Well, uh, someone uh, got access to their DNS. How did they get access to their DNS? Well, someone didn't set up two-factor authentication <laughs> in Linux.org, nor uh, the um, DNS uh, registrar, nor uh, their email address. So basically, it was uh, first come, first served when it came to that one. And someone, well, defaced the website and just set the DNS to redirect Linux.org to their own... Um, very, very not safe for work. I can't stress that enough. Um, front mm -hmm. page. So, yeah. Yeah. Two factor authentication. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Oh, and, uh, man. The... Two factors for nerds, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even the, uh, like, uh, the person in charge was like, yeah, no, that, that, that one's on us. We didn't yeah. take the mm -hmm. proper precautions. So, uh, yeah, no, they got um, properly and thoroughly owned. Jill, do you like two-factor authentication, that new oh, technology, yes. that craziness? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no two-factor off in today's day? What? What? <laughs> what are you telling me? I mean, I know like Linux.com years ago, you know, didn't have it because they were trying to be friendly to links and e-links. 
but you know, it's 2018. <laughs> so <laughs> doesn't and, Luke's um, do uh, two factor authentication it, now? It does now. It does yeah. now, but it didn't <laughs> used to. So <laughs> so for a while they didn't. But um, I noticed Linux.org was down last week when doing research for LWW. Now when I checked it, I didn't see all the the bad stuff on the screen. Mm -hmm. I just it was just it was just there was no access <laughs> to the site. <laughs> it's a thing and listen. I get it. Two-factor can, and often is, a royal pain in the you know where. <laughs> but I kind of look at it like this. Some things they kind of demanded and at the top of that list, doing what we do and realizing that um, I have a library of like 800 games. Steam, I want to keep that protected. Two-factor that. Yeah. PayPal. You have a PayPal account, even if you don't know it. <laughs> Keep that <laughs> locked in. And for flying spaghetti monsters sake, ladies and gentlemen, DNS. Come on. I mean, yeah. those definitely come to mind. <laughs> you know, they're saying yeah. presumably the hacker worked their way into the Yahoo email account, which was listed on Whois. Another pro tip, lie on your Whois records. Okay, yeah. <laughs> just oh. throwing that out there. <laughs> they requested a password and the change in the network solutions account, and they kind of went through it. So, yeah, let, let's let's do that. Two-factor anything. Life is not mm -hmm. hard. You're going to have your mobile device. There's even plugins that will scan the QR code that will live into your browser and Firefox and Chrome, Vivaldi. And there are uh, several implementations, especially if you're on Linux, there are several electron implementations that you can use google's um authenticator in so yeah it's really not an excuse at this point <laughs> and if the lack of two-factor uh, authentication in the dns wasn't egregious enough not having two-factor authentication in the email that you used to set it up which was public in the who is it's like what are you doing Hey, I mean, things I know happen. you're living that edgy lifestyle, but come on. It's important to realize yeah. uh, they walked out and they said, listen, nothing got touched. Mm -hmm. It was just a DNS redirect. And mm -hmm. we know now that's a horrible lesson to learn the hard way, but it has been learned. And hopefully it's just going to serve as an example. Maybe somebody's listening. And go, Whoa, I need to do that right now. And do so. <laughs> All right. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> up next. Microsoft Edge, mm -hmm. the world's favorite browser. <laughs> Making it a lot better through more open source collaboration because that's right, you know Microsoft and they love open source. Um, Microsoft loves open source so much. It bought GitHub and now it's showing everyone it's extra <laughs> super serial about ditching the Edge rendering engine. Uh, yeah, and replacing with Chromium. Yep, that's what they're doing. They've even yeah. begun making <laughs> contributions to the Chromium project to help move browsing forward on new ARM-based window devices. And I think, I mm -hmm. think that that's kind of the tell because yeah. you know Microsoft really is going to need, at least in the future, um, a browser that knows how to ARM. They're going to need mm -hmm. that going mm -hmm. forward. And when you think Chromium makes absolute sense because not only do you get the compatibility on ARM, you also get native applicate or what passes for native applications in 2018. We'll get to that later yeah, on. Yeah, we, we got some yeah. more on than that. <laughs> Interesting move, but I honestly thought with well, the whole thing, I was like, oh, it's just still a thing. That's cute. <laughs> Jill? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I actually wasn't surprised because, uh, you know, this is what Microsoft has to do to make Edge rel a relevant browser that actually gets some use. <laughs> so, oh, I thought you said yeah. irrelevant. And I was like, no, Jill, they've done an excellent <laughs> yeah. job at making Edge irrelevant. irrelevant. I thought it already was. But yeah. uh, in any case, if, uh, yeah, no, this is the only chance that Microsoft has mm -hmm. uh, of claiming that they have, like, market-leading browser technology in any way shape or form because we all know that uh edge was a crapshoot when it was first <laughs> launched uh nowadays it's not so bad but hey guess what first impressions count for a lot you only get one launch and uh it just didn't really uh blow anyone away it was oh yeah, hey, look it's internet explorer but seriously with a different trying to name. tell anyone that you only get one yeah. launch you're telling that to redmond redmond's like no hold my beer 
Windows 95, <laughs> Windows, Windows ME, ME second edition. Yes, uh, that's groups. why they keep having new yeah. names. Although they seem to have changed that too, because, oh no, Windows 10 <laughs> is going to be the final Windows. It is. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's Windows 10 yeah. forever. <laughs> we'll see how that goes in a couple of years, uh, or maybe a couple of months. Jill, Who knows? 2019 is a long this. year. <laughs> I mean, are you going to be using Edge? Wait, this is no. something we need to think about, though, because I, I will put I will put Truth Edge on Linux right now in 2020. We'll see Edge on Linux to everyone going 2020. Yes. That's way too late. I, yeah, good point. I was thinking about that myself. Well, I mean, you think about it. Uh, Edge is already available on Android. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. <laughs> I'm going to say yeah. uh, Edge uh, having some sort of unofficial Linux implementation in quarter two, 2019. All right, all right. I, yeah, I like that. I, I'm when I say yeah. 2020, I mean, that's <laughs> going to happen. That's going to be there. But with everything based on Chromium, is Edge really going to be any different than your Vivaldi's <laughs> or your Brave browsers? No, not really. It's just going yeah. to be Vivaldi without any of the visual bling and all of the Microsoft branding. <laughs> but one one yeah. foundation took issue yes. with the adoption of the <laughs> oh, <yeah>. foundation. <laughs> That's right. Mozilla had something to say about this, and they really did. And they're not terribly yeah. happy. And this is yes. the Mozilla Foundation. It's from their blog. You can find all of our nonsense in our show notes. It'll be in the link under the video description. Microsoft is officially giving up on an independent shared platform for the internet. Imagine typing this, if you will, with a straight face. Saying, yeah. Edge was great. It was a good thing. And you would also be, they, they are right. They do have a point. Yeah. Diversity is a good thing. And everything going over to Chromium I understand that. And it's like, that's probably a bad idea, Brad. And it comes off just, just a little salty, not too much, mm-hmm. but <laughs> there's a little bit. <laughs> but one thing I, I want to get this quote correct as I go through the show notes, we compete with Google, not because it's a good business opportunity. Nay, mm-hmm. we compete with Google because the health of the internet and online life depend on competition and choice. What we do, we do for you, citizens. Fair point. You can't really blow them up for saying that because of what they're saying. What the Mozilla Foundation is saying is true. That's a good thing. However, yeah. unpopular mm-hmm. opinion, I'm going to say Mozilla competes with Google because Firefox became such a sluggish mess that Google was able to release something that barely knew how to <laughs> browser and people yeah. used it because it was a better solution than what Firefox was in at that time. And listen, I know no yeah. one likes hearing that. <laughs> you can't pretend otherwise. That Google walked in with an opportunity. You remember the first versions of Chrome? It was fast, but mm-hmm. it, that's all it did. It could go to yeah. a web page. It and was uh, great for yeah. netbooks mm-hmm. at the time. But yes. I, I remember <laughs> using it going, yeah, you know what? That This is still better than dealing with something that chugs along and can barely display my space. It was a while ago, kids. Um, but where was this worry? You know, I've already brought it up when the Valdi and Brave showed up on the scene. Yeah. We didn't That's see the opera. <laughs> yeah. Well, the opera, yeah. opera even adopted that. But, you know, I went and dug around, looked at some usage. Yeah. From 2018, Edge went from not point, not 0.5%. All the way up to 4.25. That's actually impressive. I would have lost that bet. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. And in the same period, uh, Firefox went from 18.7 down to 10.96, while Chrome went from 51% to 67, which was more than I thought. So I don't know. I, I get the point. I don't think it would matter one way or the other because it's got the edge stink on it. And it's mm-hmm. got the Microsoft, which is just a void like the plague. So I think a lot of people will just uh, based on that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I think it's very, very important that we do need to point out the Browser Wars 2 Electric Boogaloo is not mm-hmm. going to be fought on the desktop this go around. This is all about yeah. what runs on mobile. Yeah. yeah. Media yeah, consumption really moved point. to yeah. phones, and mm-hmm. everyone, even Apple, uh, has some variant of WebKit running on their browsers so yeah 
Look, this this entire post, it's all very well and good if you take the statements at uh, face value. Yes, none of it is wrong. But if you take it as yeah. a whole, it sounds a lot like, why did you go with Blake and Webkit? Why didn't you use <laughs> Kaku instead? Come on, you guys. I, I don't think it read like yeah, that. Yeah, that's... Uh, I think this, this came from a spot of genuine concern. And Pedro is just a Chrome fanboy. <laughs> I'm not a Chrome fanboy. I use whatever works <laughs> best. He's, he's wearing and his Chrome t-shirt right now. He's probably not, but let's pretend he is. It's, sure it's Yoda. Yoda. It's Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, well, it's even it, worse. You know, Mozilla's just, you know, they were, they're worried about the Microsoft browser takeover once again. So that, that became, that was very, very <laughs> noticeable in this, in this document. Um, I really don't think they have anything to worry about, but, <laughs> but anyways, you know, Microsoft has bowed down to our internet overlord, Google. And yes, as we've been talking about it, also, Edge HTML was never a thing, really. You know, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. Like uh, Ven found that it has over four percent market share. Kind of surprised by that, but it was really never a thing. And so we're back to two standards on the internet again: Blink and and Gecko. And mm -hmm. um, for the majority of internet life, it's been that way. So <laughs> it is definitely just, a thing. I'm sure nobody's looking yeah. forward to or ever wants a repeat of just the market share that IE6 had. They don't want a VB script ever to become a thing. And hey, I, listen, if you've not checked out Firefox since uh, the Quantum bit has mm -hmm. been rolled out yeah. in the 60 series, yeah, go check awesome. it out. It's a brilliant piece of kit. I definitely use it every single day. Okay, why are yep. we talking about Canada? Well, we're talking about Canada because Canada has been doing a lot of great things. First, they yes. uh, legalized the marijuanas, and then uh, they decided, you know what? IT is a very important thing nowadays, so we need to focus on IT security and how we manage uh, software and everything else that we use at a government level. So they put out the Directive on Management of Information Technology, which details... Well, as I was reading through it, it's like, oh, that's my job description. Mm -hmm. Right up until I yeah. got to point C to uh, C238, which uh, they start talking about a lot of open source and how you should always prioritize open source technology and all of that. And I'm like, yeah, no, no. I wish the NHS would adopt that. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's very good to see the Canadian government actually taking uh, IT and ICT uh, stuff very, very to heart. Because yes. your whole life nowadays <laughs> is relying on your computer or your phone or whatever device you use. So that is a very important thing to have. Good on you, Canada. Good on you. <laughs> yeah, good on you. And, you know, I've always felt, and so all of us in the, in the Linux community, all governments and schools should be using open source software for greater transparency as well as less money spent for taxpayers. It, mm -hmm. it saves you money, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and that that's a thing. The, the school that I, I work at, they're, they're on Windows Server. And like we were talking about earlier, you know, I was asking them, so what are you going to do when Windows Server is deprecated? You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, and, and they didn't mention Linux in there. And I'm like, and I said, you know, that's the obvious choice here. <laughs> so <laughs> taking a look at it, and it's good. I, I like reading stuff like that. C238, you know, just being able to get in there with open standards. Yeah. That's first. That's yeah. good. And 221.42, leveraging open source tools and frameworks to implement the API where possible. However, this does come down to a very simple thing that the software has to meet standards first and foremost regardless of the license or whether or not it's open yeah. source yeah which this being government uh will probably at the very least cause an intern to pretend to explore open options and they'll get <laughs> back to um, whatever they were using <laughs> they'll go back to playing free cell uh on windows but it's yeah no it's great to see and so, uh c238 uh, wow that's really tying a math major, knot in my major tongue. <laughs> uh, uh, like the second bit says, if an open source option is not available or it does not meet user needs, favor platform agnostic cuts over proprietary cuts. Yes. Yes. 
Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Please. It doesn't need to be open source if it if there is really no usable alternative at that point. It doesn't have yeah. to be open source. It just has to be platform agnostic. Yes. yes. Well, exactly. Speaking God. of usability, Netbooks, Chrome <laughs> OS is slowly turning into a different creature altogether. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is actually really cool. cool. Uh, Chrome really OS cool. can now search. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Chrome OS can now search for content inside of Android apps thanks to the Firebase app indexing service and keyword. You can do keyword search for Linux apps now. And finally, Google Assistant will work on my old first edition uh, Samsung Chromebook. So I was happy to hear that. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's, it's, this is uh, so needed. And, What's interesting is the the key the Linux keyword search. Um, um, they they were saying in the article that we need uh, to specify our apps like the GIMP as a photo editing program so that the the Google search engine uh, could search it better. But you know there are other alternatives to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, yes, and we've talked about the Albert keyboard launcher before, which which kind of does all that. <laughs> so yeah, and it's uh, the way that they're doing it. They're using the keywords um, yeah, thing the inside file. a desktop file to search whether or not an app fits into the criteria. I can't help but feel that every single keyword that you could put that would make an app relevant to any given search uh, would easily be worked into an apt uh, description field. Yeah. Because the description yeah. field is already there. And it usually does a very good job of describing, like, what is GIMP? What is uh, mm -hmm. Pinta? What is really any of the other applications that you could possibly use? So... Why not use what's already there, Google? Yeah. I yeah. Look I at mean, it this a bunch of. Um, yeah. You got Chrome OS, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. People are using it. More importantly, education systems are using it because it's cheap. The hardware is cheap and it's kind of disposable. That's a bad thing for a different reason. But being able to search for content inside of Android apps, that's good because they're, they're, they are hell bent on fusing you know, Android and Chrome OS, which makes perfect sense. You know, it's going to be future yeah. or whatever, but a, you know, the improvement in the search box, you know, being able to search for Linux apps, install Linux apps, but I think in the future to maybe give you some hints and like, I'm looking for image editing, being able to allow developers to include keywords into that desktop file. If it's already there, you're going to be able to find it. But I think that'd yeah. be easily adapted but maybe what Easily, Pedro was yeah. mentioning to bring up suggestions in the search. Because, hey, after all, at the end of the day, uh, Microsoft is an advertising company first, but in a very close second, it's also a search engine. Google, mm -hmm. not Microsoft. Microsoft, Apple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's uh, no, it's good to see that Google is actually investing in Chrome OS. Remains to be seen when they will kill it, like they do with everything else. But uh, in the meantime, mm -hmm. they seem to be putting a lot of effort into it. And yes, uh, being able to play with the uh, Linux applications on the uh, Acer Chromebook is very nice. Would be mm -hmm. nice if Steam worked, so I could actually put some game through, uh, some games yeah. through it. But you know yeah, what? no 3D acceleration yet. So yeah, yeah. yeah keep keep wishing with your two hundred dollar <laughs> um, Chromebook. I'm like man, two hundred and fifty, <laughs> two hundred and fifty. Yeah. That yeah, uh, let it go, let it go. <laughs> Check this out. Let's talk about the unbiased truth. I mean, the best ah. XFCE distro in twenty eighteen. No idea how this showed up or whatever reasons this showed up in the show notes. No sir, not me. Um, here's the thing. I included this article because it's kind of, I think it's kind of silly in 2018 coming up on 2019. And this is even coming from me, which I'm just an XFCE zealot, but, uh, I completely understand the need for confirmation bias. And if you use MX Linux, MX dash one seven horizon, yes, that's really a real <laughs> distro. There you go. That by this particular blog <laughs> Is yeah, not a typo, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> I just wanted to bring this up because I personally believe Linux is far too granular of a beast to be limited by a distro desktop paradigm. That's not yes. that, that's not a thing. Mm -hmm. The best mm -hmm. desktop, be it XFCE, KDE, Unity. I'm just throwing that in there. I love uh, GNOME. 
is the one that you're currently using. It is wicked easy to install. They all will give you a default template. XFC was like, here's a menu. Go figure it out, which I like. That's what <laughs> I like. There's a panel and a menu. Have at. But the discussion <laughs> around this, what I wanted to bring up is, you know, I, I thought these types of arguments or articles are antiquated and have been for some time mm -hmm. because what, what's the barrier to entry of, trying any desktop that you want on, be it on Targos or, you know, Suzy or Ubuntu or Debian. Is, is there anything stopping you from other than, oh, let's just install that, log out? Yeah. Log back in? <laughs> not nowadays. At least, yeah, I not mean, nowadays. Space is cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess maybe there's yeah. some arguments that can be made. Oh, well, this one's customized. I, I, I don't know how I feel about that, though. Yeah. Like well, actually, you know, um, MX Linux is pretty cool. It's a Debian based distro with a medium sized footprint, which is, is a joint collaboration between Antix and former Misa, Mipip, Mipis communities. And Antix is one of the few Debian distros that will even run on a 486. So it's, it's really good for, you know, third world countries and, and, um, you know, older systems. And uh, I MX gotta Linux be this person. Is, I'm, I'm gonna is, save is this tailored. email right now. You're running a 486, <laughs> even in a third world country, you're not yeah. doing anything <laughs> yeah. other than wasting well, power. Yes, uh, you, you you're can probably search the internet running with it. some uh, yeah. very specific uh, <laughs> bit of equipment that the software was installed to run and nothing yeah. else. Outside of that, but, um, for education and stuff like yeah. that, it would make radically more sense and uh, cost wise <laughs> to get a Raspberry Pi. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. No, the, these, these little days. things can basically <laughs> emulate <laughs> any of the old processors and a bunch of different architectures. So just. Use this. Yeah, I'm just saying, plus yeah. the power requirements, especially if we're talking yeah. about a third world country, we're talking about something that can run on 5 volts versus 120 or 240. Yeah, yeah. exactly. 1.2 amps at 5 volts. You see, ladies <laughs> yes. and gentlemen, I'm trying to put the <laughs> death nail in. It's like, but for this, and, you know, 32 bit, <laughs> that's going away in another year, too. Get used to it. Welcome yeah, to the future, yeah. kids. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, no. Definitely. It, uh, this article, it was written by Dead Eye Meadow, and. <laughs> <laughs> he was the first person to uh, write a an actual critical review of Fuduntu all the way back when. Man. Uh, yeah. And I was one oh. of the very few people in the team that wasn't immediately insulted by uh, what he had to say. It's like, oh, okay. no, he has a point. Uh, <laughs> he has a point on this. He has a point on this. And he has a point on this. So... It's like, I see one of his articles and I'm like, okay, maybe there's something to be had here. And I went through this one. It's like, this is a really contrived way to point out just how much you love MX Linux. It, 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 it seems a <laughs> bit, um, I don't know, excessive. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no. It. Okay. Comparing <laughs> specific uh, compare, desktop compare environments. This, compare this to you going on about <laughs> Solus or before that Mate. Or before that, fun done too. As yeah. I said, the root of this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the best desktop manager, window manager, the best one to install is whatever you're currently running plus that. Doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it I usually Linux install after all. XFC desktop. <laughs> it took him a minute. Did you see that? He was you about know. to argue with me, but he thought better. <laughs> Uh, no, I just don't want to drag this out as long oh, as we did last week. get a solid five minutes out of this segment. Yeah. <laughs> well. Speed it up? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. How about we fly through our yeah. shell history? Aww. Let's go. Uh, so, McFly is something that allows you... It basically replaces Control cool. r for the uh, bash search. And what it gives you is Google-like suggestions based on context. Say, which folder you're in. Uh, say, how often you run a command. Uh, which command did you run most recently? And it tries to make sense of all of that to give you the most accurate search as you put in control R and you start typing whichever command you want it to find. And the creator claims that it will always present the command you're looking for if you've already typed it in the first couple of results. So that's mm -hmm. very good to hear. And it expands, of course, on the default control R functionality by presenting you more than one choice at a time. So that's very good. That's very good. Yeah. So yeah, if you have, um, a Nix system of any kind, 
give McFly a try, although I'm not entirely sure using the words neural network like they mm-hmm. do uh, in the McFly suggestions are prioritized in real time with a small neural network. That's exactly what I wrote, sure. man. Listen, here's the thing. It's written yeah. in Rust, so it's fast and safe. And the neural network, I'm just kidding. It's Skynet in disguise, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, use the term big data or use something else. <laughs> and, you know, what? this is actually a really cool utility. Uh, one of my favorite features of McFly is that the directory where you ran the command is listed in the search. Oh, that's so nice. And thus allevi- alleviating having to remember what directory you ran that command in. That's a very nice feature. Mm-hmm. And... um Um, This is a great tool and so much more powerful than control plus R or the up and down arrow keys that I use all the time. And, you know, of course, those functions, (laughs) I know you laugh at me, but I use those all the time. (laughs) And, and, uh, but it is so nice just to have, you know, the directories listed as well. So I don't have to remember I ran that command. <laughs> I am completely guilty of some of my FFmpeg <laughs> commands, my paragraphs that, you know, holding down the up button and just sitting back and waiting yeah. because you know it's going to be a minute and you're doing <laughs> pattern searches with your eyes. Yeah. When, you, when you see that yes. blob, you're like, oh, I'm getting close. All right, back, back, back. But there yeah. it is. Yes. <laughs> See, Vin does the same thing I do. <laughs> that's like uh, the embodiment of the commit strip. Yes. It's the, that's the embodiment yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. Our collective lawns. Okay. Uh, if we're talking about Skynet, you think that's horrible, but no, wait. Aww. There's more. Oh, this yes. is awesome. <laughs> this is an easy way to create an electron app via the command line. All you have to do after you install native fire is is run native fire space. Hang your head in shame. Um, yes, I understand. <laughs> in quotes, uh, the name of the website. And we'll use this example, linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> and I was thinking of making an elect- electron app out of linuxgamecast.com. And and that's what this, this uh, application native fire does. It's an easy way to make an electron app to bubble wrap all the things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, for one, just want to know what hellscape have millennials created where everything is written in JavaScript. Uh, this thought crossed yes. my mind earlier this it's week. Just you might have noticed it on now. Twitter. Yes. When I yes. first ran across this. Yeah. yeah, no, they just call it the internet nowadays. It's like, oh, what's that? Everything you have, ever, uh, your entire life is on the internet. Just create an Electron app and put it on your desktop. Oh, there yes. we go. Well, well, check this out. I mean, if you're thinking, hey, man, let's do a new app and no JS is step one. Don't worry. You think that's evil? Oh, no, it's even better. It supports Flash, Pedro. Yeah. Oh, God. No. Yeah. No. 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 Just kill it. Kill it with fire. <laughs> You can kill it. And you can't kill us. And yeah. if you'd like to keep everything rocking and rolling, you can head over yes. to linuxgamecast.com forward slash support. We got a gang of ways to make this show possible. It's freeware. We put it out there. And if you like it, hey man, kick us a few shuckles back. We got Patreon. We got Amazon affiliate links. You know it's the holidays. And uh we get a cut from that. We got the humble bundles, the PayPal's, and look at that. Wait, hang on. Hang on. I got a better example. Look at that. There's uh, shirts. There's merch. And Jill, yes. come on. Come on. Yes, here we go. <laughs> Yay. Here's the merch. We've officially sold Linux out. Linux Gamecast. And, and I even have one that's defective. <laughs> dude, dude, you, you got the jacked up mug. You got, you got the collector's yeah, the very, item. Misprint. Yes, the very, <laughs> the very up, first misprint. one printed, a, a uh, collector's item. I love it. Uh, we don't, you can, it's like a Model T, man. You, you can get any color you want as long as it's black or pink. I made the pink ones for me. And we have the one chair. We got the hill Santa that's going away at Christmas. Frank file and the three chair mood and hoodies, uh, girls awesome. tees, stickers, all that fun stuff. But uh, <laughs> we also want to thank the 112 beautiful party patrons, kicking us two hundred sixty four dollars a week <laughs> to come to you Yay. live, independent, commercial free, and all that fun stuff. Because it's true, it is absolutely true. Over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, we got a couple extra things we like to give you for supporting us, like access to our game of who, your own custom RSS Yay. feed. Where you get to hear, if you're ever curious, and I mean, you have to be a special breed and want to know what goes on behind the scenes. That's a hour long extra show we do for everyone each week. And yes. good on you, brave soldiers, for listening to that weird thing. But 
you know, we try to be open and you get access to our show notes and all the other stuff because we want more people to come in and tell us we're wrong before we do it and give us ideas and jump in Discord while you're at it where we also yes. have access to maybe you're at work and you're like, man, I'd like to listen to this at work, but I get in trouble listening on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Discord, we have live audio for all of our live shows. Yep. So come check that out. Yes. Uh, thanks, everyone, making this possible. <laughs> uh, what are you uh, crazy kids playing Thursday? Are you still doing that D&D &D nerd stuff? Yes, yes. Yeah, we'll be doing the Dungeon and da Dragons uh, Dungeon Crawler RPG with Jordan. For, uh, this is, will be the third installment, and it's been a, a really a lot of fun. And uh, for all you uh, tabletop nerds out there, uh, come watch. And all of you not tabletop nerds who, who want to learn gaming that's in IRL, but it's still over the internet. <laughs> that makes uh, sense. I, and I watch it for all the wrong reasons because I can see Jordan sweat because he's trying to juggle. But I was like, oh, that's what it's like, buddy. I do that a couple of times a week. Um, <laughs> Pedro, you blew everybody's mind with a game that made yeah. an N64 look like a graphical juggernaut yesterday. That yes, cool. in four <laughs> by three, which is why you could see the Linux Gamecast Live logo down the side. Because I, yeah, I tried, man. I tried to get that glide renderer to work with mine, and it just wasn't having any of it. So, software renderer <laughs> it is, and the highest resolution that the software renderer for Recoil can do is 1024 by 768. So, well, I, yeah, I, I like the idea. Personally, I would have just resized and put the chat vertically, but you. And your own wave, uh, right? I couldn't get the size to uh, the chat to behave properly in vertical mode. So, yeah, no, I will figure that out. If that ever happens again, I will figure it out. <laughs> hey. And one thing we're doing now we do want to point out, because uh, I'm going to remind you, live on air, Pedro, we also <laughs> stream on Twitch now. So if we're streaming oh, on Twitch, yes. what do we got to do when we stream on Twitch? Hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, do you go to twitch.tv for slash Linux Gamecast and you hit the uh, favorite button? Did I still call it favorite? It's been a while. <laughs> he, he's not He's not catching what I put out. No, you, you go to twitch.tv for slash uh, manager and change the title of the thing before you broadcast. <laughs> wah, wah. Well, uh, okay. that's the thing. I went there and someone had already changed it. Ah. <laughs> so that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it was like 30 minutes before it's like, oh, it's already been yeah, it's never time mind. for a delightful <laughs> slice of pie after our uh, cool. incessant bickering. Let's talk about <laughs> games. We don't get to talk about games a whole lot on this show because yes. you know, we kind of do a show about gaming on, and all that fun stuff all day Saturday. But uh, the fine young cannibals over at raspberrypi.org, mm -hmm. they played around with the Steam Link on Raspberry Pi because that's the thing. Valve's like, yo, we made a bunch of these things buy them for two bucks. They didn't sell mm -hmm. out, so they had to do that two or three times. And Valve eventually got smart and said, hey, we're not going to make these anymore, turning them into collector's items so you know everyone went and bought one. Smart move, Valve. But they've made a Debian package, mm -hmm. which, you know, it, you just throw that onto your mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi. I know much to the chagrin of Jordan. He's like, a <laughs> it's like, no one uses Fedora on Raspberry Pis. But they tried yeah. it out. And if you've been living in a cave somewhere, you don't know what this does. This allows you to stream your desktop games to mm -hmm. over your network. Awesome. You can use Wi-Fi if you hate yourself. Plug in an HDMI and play it on the big screen. It's right there. It'll pair up with the Steam controller. Or I think basically anything with Bluetooth, right? Yeah, anything with uh, Bluetooth yeah. or any, of course, anything that's wired as well. <laughs> if you have so, the uh, no. USB uh, ports to spare, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it only has the one. I know, so I know. I put a, <laughs> put a USB splitter on mine. <laughs> I'm a little bit curious because you know, now that the link's dead, and the original hardware, while it, it served its purpose that was really because like it's open for development yeah. and everyone looked at the hardware and went of what i mean <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. you're locking it down out of the box I'm yes we can unlock it but physical like the capacity what? it was it made it made a raspberry <laughs> pi look uh overkill so i think maybe yeah. we might be able to see some things like i don't know media servers netflix oh yes no no amazon prime uh, no that'll be too much uh, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I look forward to it. Okay. Um, that's going to get us out yeah. of here unless you want to talk uh, to us. How did I do that? <laughs> well, you can do that very, very easily by going to LinuxGameCast.com oh, and you hit right. the uh, contact button. Yes. Uh, you 
pick L, uh, LWDW from the little choosy box. I was about to say LGC Weekly, but no, 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 no. <laughs> That's the other show. Uh, and you type in your message and you'll let us know exactly what we got wrong, what we got right, what you think we could improve, what you think we're doing far <laughs> too well and you would like us to stop right now. So, uh, yeah, let us know and we will be happy to feature your question, your feedback right here, right now. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, someone had a bit of a question this yeah. week. Bring uh, it. Yeah. Tacotis. Tacocus? Tacocus. Yeah, t- uh, He t-cocus. says, uh, or they say, uh, does anyone know if a AMD Ryzen 2200G can be used in conjunction with a discrete video out at the same time with Linux? Would it have to be AMD plus AMD, or would AMD plus NVIDIA work? Uh, the answer is yes. Yes, you yes. can use whichever <laughs> oh, discrete uh, GPU you want to, because the motherboard that you're going to put that 2200G, chances are it has at least one PCIe by 16 port. So you can just plug in whatever video card you want to, and it will, uh, if you plug the monitor or the TV or whatever into said video card instead of to the motherboard, it will use the discrete GPU rather than the integrated one. Of course, if yeah. you want to use the integrated one, just plug the monitor into the motherboard. Now, That's it. Maybe I'm reading yeah. this question <laughs> wrong, but uh, I'm kind of getting lost with what you said versus the at the same time. Yeah. Oh, um, I actually, at the same I've time, had... can you use, I'm assuming, correct me if yeah. I'm right. Can you use yeah, the you, both? Can you have a, can I have discrete? a discrete? Can, can I have a... I could be getting this wrong. Maybe I'm misremembering. I'm smoking crack. Can you have yeah. like two, ac- two separate X-rays? I mean, one if on... you're wanting to use both yes, at the same time... what I'm reading. Yeah. Uh, actually using both video outs, using both the uh, Ryzen... Uh, the Sorry, the RX Vega 5 on the 2200G and whatever other discrete AMD GPU, uh, you will need to have an AMD discrete graphics if you want to use both at the same both time. Both together. Yeah. yeah. Or a really old NVIDIA video card that will um, use the Mesa drivers because the proprietary NVIDIA drivers are just basically going to curb stomp any uh, installation of Mesa that you may have going on at that time. But yeah, if you yeah. want to use both at the same time, you're better off with AMD plus AMD. Oh, but if I yeah. read this like I originally did, it's like, yeah, can you just put in a another GPU and run that through? Then yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, been a thing for a while. <laughs> um, interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah. All right. So I mean, I have a little experience with this with uh, the older APUs, and actually, with some of the older systems, you can put the NVIDIA cards uh, with the AMD APU. But now with the mm-hmm. MPU Ryzen, it's a little different. <laughs> they, they've changed some of that. <laughs> uh, Katana says they can be used yeah. at the same time: one monitor in the motherboard, one and one on the GPU. There you go. Look at that. Okay, Solving cool. problems with <laughs> yeah. science. All right, on that bomb show, let's dance out of here. Thanks everyone for showing up. We're gonna play some music and roll some credits. Hopefully, your name's in them because you're awesome. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> There's names. <laughs> Yay! Ven. Yay to Ben Stone! I have, Yay uh, to Pedro Mateus! I kid you not, the, and the original joke. Inforce <laughs> integrated, it was the first motherboard. Remember when oh. NVIDIA made uh, graphics chipset. chipsets? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that used the system RAM, and it was not a low end board either. Nope. It was crazy, and mm. that thing ran like dog poo. I just tried it once, because I already had a discrete graphics card. I remember reading the reviews back in the day of comparing Enforce uh, chipsets with dedicated uh, ATI uh, graphics cards, and it was, to be fair, it held its own. <laughs> cool. That was a thing. And now, yeah. <laughs> now everything's crazy because the video Hi, out. Mm-hmm. My motherboard has an HDMI port on it. That's so, like, what? Yeah. Crazy. Bye, everyone. Two. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>